Shall we leave our hand to God and give God praise? Please open your mouth and lift your hand to him. He is worthy of our praise. What a great God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Come and give it to him. Just think of what the Lord has done and bless his holy name. Adore him and magnify him. Lembros keli angreboli agayabo. Mezumbre lize kebi agayaba. Mezubre liya kasko poli mengrebo shabi alaba. Le krebuli masubeli ayaba. Will you give him praise one more time? Thank him for all that he had done. Thank him for all that he has done. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. I will be sharing a message tonight that I believe God laid on my heart, dealing with the issues of life. And from the text, but we are going to take one prayer point, and I, we are going to anchor that prayer on Luke chapter 21 and verse 10. Leo chapter 21 and verse 10. Preferably in King James Versa. Leo chapter 21. I'm starting, I'm more familiar with that. This scripture says, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. It shall turn. It didn't say it may turn. What did it say? It shall turn. But the question, what is that thing that we turn? That is my message. It shall turn. So you can say, Heavenly Father. Say, Father God. Tell again, Father God. Let the issues of my life be turned into testimony by reason of the encounter of tonight. Turn my story into testimony. Please go ahead and pray. Turn my story into testimony. Lengrebo shakahian de gebo. Mezungre biza gabiaga darabo. Mashunde lebo. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Will you please, if you wouldn't mind, join your hand with someone by your side, and then I will prefer face my facial kind of prayer. There are two hands joined together. Two hands joined together. You will pray and say, Father God. Say it again, Father God. I stand in the gap for this your child. Whatever be the issues of your life, the Lord will turn it into testimony today. Go ahead and pray. The Lord will turn it into testimony. Lembromoza Gabiaya Gaba. Mezumbre li, mezumbre li, mezumbre li, mezumbre li. Legadabo Shamaha. Le cremes kanda gabuma. The Lord will turn your issues into testimony. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Father God, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. Thank you, Father, because you are not only dependable, you are reliable. You have never failed and you will never fail. Unto you, we have gathered tonight. Father, let there be a turnaround. Let there be a turnaround. Whatever may be the issue tonight, Father, turn it around into testimony. Let somebody be able to say after this, have you? Come and see what the Lord have done. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. You will help me walk to three people and give a hand. I say, I see God turning your issue into testimony. I see God turning your issue into testimony. Come and put your hand together and take your seat. Mark chapter 5, I read from verse number 25. Dealing with the issues of life. Mark chapter 5, I read from verse 25. And a certain woman which had an ease of blood 12 years. And I spent many, and I've suffered many things of many physicians. And I spent all that she had and was not better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For he said, if I may touch 
but it's cloth. I shall be made whole. Verse 29. And straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up and she fed in her body that she was healed of that plague. For the sake of emphasis, we are going to read verse 25. Together. Verse 25, shall we go? And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood, 12 years. How many years? 12 years. Unfortunately, her name was not mentioned, but I'm sure she has a name. It's like society decided to use our issue as a means of identification. Issue of blood is not a name, it's a condition. So there are times people use what you are going through to describe you. I'm sure she has a name. But our issue became more important than our name. So I want to be saying some few things about this woman. And then we go into prayer. There is no doubt you have heard a message being preached from this woman before. Or you have read about her story before. And then you have been blessed. I just have a few things I want to pass across. Number one, the issues of life are common to mankind. The issues of life are common to mankind. Everyone has issues. But our issues are not the same. But everyone has issues. Everyone. There is no mortal man that does not have an issue at hand. The issues of life are common to mankind. There is nothing you are going through that is limited to you alone. It's common. The issues of life is common to mankind. Everyone, listen to me, by issue, I mean something that bothered you. Something that weighed you down once in a while. Something that made you go to bed and you find it difficult to sleep. The issues of life are real and it is common to mankind. Everyone, where you are sitting now, there is something that has become an issue. Everyone has that one issue or the other that perhaps has become something that weighs you down and take away your pain. Something that makes you unhappy once in a while. The issues of life are real. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. He said, it is common to man. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. What is it? It is common to man. It is common to man. The issues of life are real. And it is that everyone has issues. To somebody somewhere, it may be an issue of joblessness. You are looking for a job. They find, as a matter of fact, you found a job, but that's not the kind of job you dream about. It's an issue. Somebody somewhere is desiring to get married. You are due for marriage and you are saying, look, for how long will I wait? It's an issue. Everyone has issues. One issue or the other. A lady walked into my office sometimes to go after a service and he said, daddy, give me husband or I die. And I was happy for a boat. It's an issue. Everyone has one issue or the other. You could be holding some money somewhere and you don't know how to pay. It's an issue. You could be married to a man whom you thought was a child of God only to discover he was not who you thought he was. It's an issue. You are enduring a marriage you are supposed to enjoy. It's an issue. It could be a financial issue. You borrow some money and then you have to pay back and yet you didn't make profit from the money. Everyone has one issue or the other. But I come in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of the living God. Whatever the issue may be, it shall turn into testimony. It shall turn into testimony. Today the Lord will turn that issue around into testimony in the name of Jesus. So the issues of life are common to mankind. Come that a man is well dressed is not an indication that all is well. Some people are happy not because there's a reason to be happy. They just made up their mind to be happy. Some are smiling not because there's a reason to smile. To smile was just a choice. Why? Because the issues of life are real. There are issues. In the case of this woman, it was an issue of blood flow. We are not told she has issue with her marriage. We are not told she has financial issue. We are not told she has issue with any other thing. But just one issue. And you may be here tonight. There are issues that are weighing you down. 
the issues of life are common to mankind. Come on. You know, there are times, it may not even be your issue. It may be the issue of a family member. The issue of a spouse. The issue of a son. The issue of a daughter. The issue of a friend. And by virtue of relationship, that issue somehow has become your personal issue. Dealing with the issues of life. I went to our Lagos church some time ago, and then after a service on Sunday, I was doing counseling. And an elderly man walking, not a member of the church, and he came in with a child, one of his sons. And when he entered, he met me where I was sitting. And he said, Pastor, I said, Yes, sir, you are welcome, sir. I joke, sir, and all of that. And the man said, This is my son. I am giving him as an offering unto God. So I didn't quite understand because that would be the fourth time I would see somebody bringing a complete human being as an offering to God. <laughs> so I am giving my son as an offering to God. So I go, okay, sit down. And then when the man was going back, he left the boy. <laughs> I now call him. I said, Daddy, I don't understand what you mean. He said, no, I've given him unto God. Let him be serving God. <laughs> and I said to him, how do I get him across to God? I just said, what happened? The man boxed her into tears. You know what he said? He said, this boy will kill me. That is why he can offer him as a sacrifice. <laughs> now, you, yeah, now, you are laughing. I couldn't laugh that day. You know, that is an issue. Is that not an issue? That day the mother gave back to that boy. Somebody said, congratulations. The day the mother gave birth to that boy, she was excited that finally God gave me a baby boy. But the boy turned around to be a source of pain to the family. It's an issue. Now you have such a child or such a son or such a daughter, you are not proud of him. Every time the boy comes around, the man said, nobody sleep in the house. That is an issue. The issues of life are real. But I want to believe God for somebody here. As the Lord live it. Whatever the issue may be, there shall be a testimony. Can I hear an agreement with your enemy? There shall be a testimony. The issues of life are common to mankind. We are not talking. That does not mean there are no issues. Perhaps we are more mature than each other. One very rich man came to me for prayer. At the dead hour of the night, when every normal human being should have gone to bed, and he came Nicodemusly. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he parked his car at the far distance. He doesn't want to be seen. Very rich man, very well to do. I mean, I mean, very successful man by every human standard. And when he came and he sat down and he was sitting here, before he said anything at all, he was sitting here. And I asked within myself, what we make a man of this level to cry? So before hearing that story, I started binding the devil. I assumed maybe he had made some investment and lost some money. Or he would do somewhere. I said, the devil, you are liar. Lose your hold on the man. On the man, father. And the man said, he told me, said, Reverend Joshua, I don't have problem with my money. I don't have problem with my investment. I am doing very well on every area. And the man boxed into tears again. Couldn't control his emotion. You know that she say that even the rich cry. I was just, I was just what you know. I was about to give medication before hearing a case study. <laughs> you are supposed to hear the story before you prescribe. Now, when the man will open his mouth to tell me what the issues are, it was far from my expectation. There are people you, you, you. That the time you look at yourself and you envy some individual. You say, I wish I am like social person. I wish I am like that brother. By the time you hear the story of the other side, you will thank God for where you are. 
Come on, little woman. Your case is not, is not as bad as you are thinking. It's not. No matter how poor, how bad it may be, there is somebody somewhere that envy you. And when the man gathered up himself and balanced up, I gave him a lot of time to cry. You know he needed to cry to be able to talk. And when he gathered himself, he said, Reverend Joshua, is there anything you can do to put my 25 years of marriage asunder? <laughs> I'm happy you say, ah. <laughs> so here, he hasn't spoken yet. Finally, he opened up. He said, Reverend Joshua, the way my wife is beating me, I don't think I can live long. I don't think I can live long. You are laughing. <laughs> now, when the man looked at me, he saw on my face a kind of doubt and disbelief. He now began to unfold the trouser to so many spot of laxes that the wife inflicted on his body. And he said to me, Sir Reverend Joshua, if something is not done, I will die. Is that not an issue? <laughs> but listen to me. But by Monday morning, you see such a person being driven by a driver, sitting at the back, at the owner corner, in a big jeep and a big car, and then you are looking at him and say, hey, I wish I am like this man. Your wife may not be educated, but at least she's not beating you. It's not beating you. So you don't know what you have when you call your wife and she answer you. You don't know what you have when you return from work and your wife gives you a hug. You don't know what you have when you come back from work and your wife begins to prepare your table. Now listen, no matter how bad it may be, there is still much more to thank God for. The issues of life are real. Everyone has one issue or the other. And listen, you must be mature enough. You can't tell your issue to everyone. You can't tell your issue. And you know there are people who like to hear other people's issue. As if they don't have their own. They will sit down like a judge and say, let me hear it. God is turning that issue into testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God is turning that issue into testimony. Luke chapter 21 verse 13. Don't forget that scripture for tonight. And it shall turn. 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 That marital disappointment shall turn. That delay you have suffered in getting married. Everything about your life that has suffered in it. It shall turn. Number two point, there are issues that you cannot undo by yourself. And that does not mean you are not spiritual. That does not mean you are not a child of God. There are issues that you cannot what, undo by yourself. There are issues that require divine intervention. What is divine intervention? God stepping in. God taking over. There are issues you cannot handle by yourself. And there are issues that require what I call prophetic intervention. That is a man of God speaking into your life. Yeah. And I know it's a servant of God standing in the gap and speaking into your life. There are issues that it beyond you, sir. Don't be deceived. Come on, that does not mean you are not spiritual. It only means you have a limitation. I am anointed, fine, but there are anointed. Anointed are at a different level. The children of Israel went to Egypt by themselves. When they wanted to leave, they couldn't come out by themselves. Nobody carried them there. By themselves, they walked to Egypt. If you are able to go to somewhere by yourself, so you, you should be able to live when you like. 
And they went to France and said, we have done enough, we are going by. Philip said, you are not going to anywhere. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. By a prophet. The Lord brought them out of Egypt. By themselves, they went. By a prophet, God brought them out. So there are situations you find yourself that you cannot bring yourself out by yourself. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. By a prophet. But they did not need a prophet to go inside. The question I want to ask, why did this woman bled for 12 years? Dr. Abad, you have made you will explain to us the danger of that kind of thing. Bleeding for 12 years. And that will be the answer to the question. Why many people suffer for so long? He said, my ears are not dead, neither to my eye blind, nor my hand show that I cannot deliver. So why must somebody suffer one affliction again and again and again? And not only that, why must you continue the affliction that your mother suffer, that your father suffer? For 12 years, she was trying to do it by herself. For how many years? For 12 years. She was trying to do it by herself. The Bible says, she had no means. It says, as a matter of fact, what brought her to Jesus? Because there was no more money to go to the hospital. So doing it by herself, moving from one hospital to another, with there's nothing wrong with that. But do you know that in 12 years, she did not see the need to pray? In 12 years, she did not see the need to go to church and ask a man of God to pray. That day she came to Jesus, what that day she received a miracle. That means, if she had come 12 years earlier, she would not have bled for 12 years. Our affliction get prolonged when we don't come to the one and the only one that have the answer. 12 years of bleeding will have been avoided. It says, come on time. There are issues of life that is beyond you. You can't handle it. You must recognize I need to talk to, my, to God's servant. Please over me about this one. This one is too much for me. I can't handle it. Listen to me, sir. Every pastor needs a pastor. And every prophet needs a prophet. There must be somebody speaking to your life at every time. 12 years of bleeding will have been avoided. There are some who are leading. Here they are bleeding. And the reason being that they won't talk to no one. Let me give you something that happened some time ago. This lady has been believing God to get married. And by human assessment, beautiful, educated, and they serve a God. And to pray for her to get married became a project. We prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And, not, and yet we're running by. So one day I call her. I said, I hope you are not living in sin. Because that's the only thing that can make God not answer our prayer. I said, we are praying, we are fasting, we have done all manner of spiritual exercise. And I said to her, we are going to wait on the Lord for another three days. And I said to her, that the only thing we are going to pray about now, Lord, saw so all the root of this matter. There is no affliction without the root. And at times you need to uncover the root if you want to be totally free. Totally free. Totally free. Many of you are, who are praying, there are some things you suffer that your children still not suffer. No. Acts chapter 12 and verse 3. The Bible says, error proceeded further. Acts chapter 12 verse 3. There are some afflictions on family that are proceeding further. Because nobody has be able to rise up. Come on now. And because he saw what? That he, plo, he, he, he pleaded you. What happened? He proceeded further. He proceeded further. One generation suffered, another suffered. He proceeded further. There are certain things in your family and your lineage that shouldn't proceed further. When the key James, everybody relax. And they were looking for scripture to console themselves. The Lord give it, the Lord take it. Now, when he apprehended Peter, what happened? 
that you are praying. And Peter didn't die. That if they had prayed in the case of James, James too would not have died. There are some things we are battling with today. We refuse to confront it yesterday. So Satan proceeded further. Now I call this guy, I say, this lady, I say, we are going to take three days of prayer and fasting. The fourth day, the second day. I said, can I say, Daddy, I remember something. I said, tell me that thing. I'd like you to listen to this. He said, I remember a few years ago when I was living with my grandmother. We have some disagreement together. She don't remember on the third day. She never remembered this one before. And he said the, it was a hot argument between her and the grandmother. And she remembered that the grandmother undressed and brought out a right breast. Wickedness is real, sir. And out of anger, make a pronouncement to a granddaughter and say, if this is the breast that your mother suck, if not in my presence, you will get married. But listen, but the guy waved it off to her. That cannot be anything serious. And she never remember until we started the prayer and fasting. There are issues that require prophetic intervention. Now let me say this. I said to her, the Lord lay on my heart. I said, do you have the picture of your grandmother? He said, yes, sir. She ran home. I was waiting for her in the church. Because this is something I'm I, I am so interested in the case of the lady because very committed in the church. And then there's no testimony to prove that he's really serving God. So that come somehow makes me to be interested. And she ran home and brought the picture of the grandmother. And you know, you know some people, even inside picture, they are wicked. So I was holding the picture in my hand and, uh, and the Lord was giving us step by step of what to do. I said to, to God, what do we do with the picture? Now listen to me very well. The Lord told me to go and bury the picture. I called the lady along. We went to the back of the church. I used the heel of my shoe to bury the picture. And then she asked me, she said, what do I do next? Sir? I said, God has not told me anything for that. Now exactly two weeks from that day, that we buried the picture, the grandmother died. Now listen, I can't be arrested for burying picture. I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not picture I bury? <laughs> but I'm taking you somewhere. Now, the following week, a young guy walked to her and said to her, I want to marry you. I want to marry you. And the lady had the young man. I said, ah, how come? He said, because when she was giving her testimony, she said, see and this young man, they meet virtually every day. They join boss at the same bus stop. And most time when they are coming back together, they join the same boss. So the lady was now asking the young man, say, why are you just talking to me now? You see me virtually every day. You know what the young man said? Who didn't know anything about the, you know, the, what has happened? The young man said, before now, whenever I want to make a move to talk to you, fear with your great man. He said, but yesterday, after the, the, now, the man said, yesterday, now, I just told myself, whatever is going to happen, let it happen. So he said, yesterday, I gathered some courage that I'm going to talk to you. Whether you agree or not, I will just talk. <laughs> Unknown to the man, it was the death of the grandmother that paved way. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I pray for somebody here. In the name that is above every other name. Whosoever need to go for you to move, let it be in the name of Jesus. Whosoever need to be removed for you to move forward, let it be in the name of Jesus. We cannot reach up. Psalm chapter 7 and verse 9. Jeffy pray. Wickedness is real. Psalm chapter 7 and verse 9. He said, oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Come on now. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Some people are like this because of the wickedness of the wicked. 
some lady can't get married because of the wickedness of the wicked. Some are laboring as if they are not working because of the wickedness of the wicked. You let them, they refuse to leave you. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Let me share one more testimony and then I will pray. 